Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, my name is Adi. I'm a senior manager at PayPal, uh, where I lead a team uh, of uh, AI experts dedicated to deal with the um, on-off transaction prediction, meaning try to block whoever takes over your account at PayPal. And today, um, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about a uh, struggle um, many of you must have encountered since you're sitting here, uh, and that's balancing research and delivery goals uh, in order to maximize AI profit. Um, now, we want to do cutting edge uh, um, things uh, no one has ever done before, but we always have to think of delivery as well. Uh, this is a picture of uh, the spaceship spaceship uh, Bereshit, who was really out there, but um, delivery was. So I think that uh, uh, this topic is really important right now, because uh, the data science AI field is more mature. It's not like uh, it was a few years ago. It, it was brand new. And any type of algorithm that you've implemented um, brought immediate success coming from uh, low-hanging fruit exists out there. Um, I think that uh, in our domain, we have to cut deeper right now in order to make uh, new achievements. And I think that also the talent is available. More AI experts are, are out there uh, and in the companies that are able to do in-depth research and provide those breakthroughs. So I'm going to try to give a few guidelines from uh, my experience on um, how to balance the stress, the need to research, but also the need to perform and deliver something at the end. Um, but first, maybe go back a little bit to the problem statement. Um, why do we ne even need to balance that? One might say, OK, we are researchers. We are uh, experts. The impact will come only um, as a byproduct. Just let us do our uh, sophisticated uh, algorithm, uh, and um, once we get to a breakthrough, then we can uh, release it, and that's going to be good enough. So um, from my experience, that's totally not so. We are in a very competitive uh, business environment where you have to show quarterly benefits and reports and so on, and uh, you have to really aim towards a specific goal in order to, to get there. Um, with the exception of research labs, of course. Uh, companies sometimes hold a, a, a team or a group of dedicated uh, researchers just in order to, to get the innovation going within the company. But again, from my experience, uh, knowing our PayPal research lab, they also have to uh, perform and provide tools for the other uh, researchers in a timely manner um, so that we can, again, reach those uh, business goals that uh, uh, the management keep dic dictating us. Um, now, the other might say, well, the Academy already made the breakthroughs. Let's just read the article and implement that off the shelf and get uh, the best uh, profit to a company. Um, now, that approach is legitimate. If you are able to take something off the shelf, press a click, implement it in a matter of a month or two, well, that's, that's great, that's good enough. But then I don't think that you are part of a, a, a data science team or a research team, right? Because you don't need that expertise, you don't need that talent. Uh, um, again, to, to run two clicks off the shelf, you can just take a, a, a group of analysts and uh, um, have them focus on uh, other uh, um, challenges, not in the algorithmic domain. Um, and again, from my experience, it's, it doesn't usually work just off the shelf. Uh, uh, today, there is a lot of value to be a domain expert to know how to adjust that theoretical article that you've read into something that works with your data requires 
a lot of experiments, a lot of back and forth, a lot of uh, uh, actual hands-on uh, uh, research within the company in order to uh, uh, make it apl uh, uh, applicable. Um, so, a few of my guidelines. First of all, try to frame your problem. Um, is it a solved problem? Like, if your uh, challenge is to try to identify with computer vision um, numbers, then yes, it's a solved problem. Someone have tried it many times, it works. Maybe you have a little bit of challenge to do it for your need and so on, but you know that can be done. Uh, however, if your challenge is to do some um, transportation optimization, that's not totally solved. Um, many have tried and failed, and again, with optimization, there's no like one specific answer, and maybe you won't reach the, the business goals that you're required to. So, so try to understand, like, is it done uh, ever, and, and, and how do you progress from that? Um, is it a brand new project in the company? Uh, like, are you working on a, a, a brand new uh, uh, product or someone has already done it and now your challenge is just to improve it? And even if you n only need to improve it, are you trying a brand new algorithmic approach or just try to, you know, do some tuning to the old uh, uh, product, to the old prediction? Um, those factors really can, can shift and make you understand um, uh, how ambitious uh, is your new goal. Now, in addition to that, uh, many times the, the project will be about other challenges, like maybe the struggle here is with uh, data engineering and bringing new data through new data pipes. Uh, maybe it's a new framework. Uh, for us, we often uh, face legal challenges uh, to, to get the new prediction approved or maybe persuade a new customer that uh, he needs this product and uh, teach him how to use this product. So if there are many other challenges and other loose ends, m maybe you don't want to be that uh, um, bold with the algorithmic challenge that you're taking on this project. Again, try to understand the whole ecosystem and frame it a bit. And after you do that, make sure you have the right talent in place. Um, if the challenge, again, is very, very algorithmic, have the expert. If not, m m maybe you don't want to put something, someone on this task that is not right for it. And also for the individual, uh, when you're facing a task, think, are you the right person to, to face the challenges here? Um, if the challenges are more in the data engineering and you consider yourself more of an um, algorithmic researcher, maybe it's better to pass that on to someone else. Um, after you framed and you know where you stand uh, in general, try to get a benchmark. Um, recently, my team has implemented um, the first uh, deep learning uh, prediction in a use case that is not that trivial for deep learning. Usually it's used in uh, text analysis or computer vision, and we uh, have applied deep learning on um, regular um, classified tabloid information, and we had the question of, hey, does deep learning will really get us something over GBTs? Uh, so really wanted to get the benchmark first before we commit, and understand what kind of an improvement can we do, because, okay, everyone loves deep learning today, it's a fancy name, but it doesn't mean that it's going to bring us the 15% improvement that our customer wants. So, first of all, we try to get an inner benchmark that came from our uh, research lab um, uh, that tried to, to do something similar, not on the specific data, not on the exact specific use case, but try to do something similar. Then we did our own POC, just if, if we do the very basic and simple thing with um, a specific architecture that we had in mind, what is the very initial result, just to get a set of where we're starting. And we also 
uh, try to reach out to the industry, ask other companies, um, read articles. Uh, hey, have you tried deep learning for those kinds of use case? How much improvements does it have over other state-of-the-art uh, algorithms like um, uh, trees classifiers? So um, after we've got a good sense of all of those, we concluded them and gave a, 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 a performance estimation of something that we think we can achieve in this project. And that is something that I recommend for you as well. Understand what is the range of what you can do. Um, so after you've framed your problem, have the right benchmark in place, try to set the expectation right uh, with whoever you're talking with. Um, if the project is too out there, uh, too many uh, loose ends, maybe you need to frame it as an, uh, M uh, an MPV before you do a major commitment. Say, OK, you know what? We need research here. Let's do it for a quarter, maybe two. And, and then we'll be able to say if it's uh, uh, something that is indeed applicable and brings the right results. Uh, for instance, in my team, we had a project of uh, doing anomaly detection of uh, incoming uh, fraud pressure from the environment, which is something that we don't normally do. We usually try to predict per transaction, and here we try to predict per all transactions in the environment, and it was an um, unsupervised approach of understanding that there is a problem with the whole environment. Um, so we tried twice to do uh, an MPV and failed twice. I think now we are in a, a place where maybe the third time uh, we can pick it up and do it right. Uh, but no disappointment because I've set the expectation uh, uh, beforehand. Um, if the time is pressing and you don't have enough uh, resources to invest in the, in the research that you would like, uh, declare it as a best effort. Say, OK, so taking it off the shelf, my benchmark shows this and that. Given the time I have, I don't think I can reach much more. Know that in hand. Maybe I'll get lucky, and uh, one of my um, very few experiments I, I will manage to perform will get some better results, but I cannot commit to that. And um, communicate those expected business results to whoever you're working with. Uh, whether it's your manager, have him know that you are uncertain regarding the performance you can reach. Um, if it's the customers, uh, if it's uh, um, management or CTO, um, have them know. And if there is a big mismatch in expectation, Maybe you don't want to start this project. Maybe you want to invest in something that is more safe, familiar, eh, or something that has uh, a, a better chance of uh, um, answering your customers' needs. Um, now, during the project, uh, first of all, be minded to time. I know it's not uh, that sexy. You want to like do an in-depth research, uh, apply all your um, uh, approaches that you've heard of, try everything that you've uh, 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 seen in the academy. But you have to be minded to time. And if we're looking at the whole project, maybe not even start with the research. We talked before about having the other pieces in place, like the, the framework, the, the um, uh, the data, make sure you've got them right, and then only um, go to the stage where you actually experiment a bit more when you already have some certainty that you will be able to make the deadline. Um, work in an agile fashion. Of course, you don't uh, always have to start with uh, uh, the whole vision and go for that and nothing else. Try with something small, then something a bit bigger, then uh, uh, go further, and uh, then you can fail very safely. Um, do effective research. Again, when you are carried away to 
to, to your research and try different approaches. Um, you, you want to be off the grid and uncalculated, but still working in an uh, orderly fashion in a scientific manner uh, will get you a long way. Um, also, uh, I want to recommend using many of the tools out there that helps you do version management. Uh, I'm not going to expand on that. That's going to be that can be a whole different talk on on what kind of tool do you use to manage your project and specifically the milestones that you've reached. But I'll definitely recommend diving into that, investing in that, uh, uh, and and um, that will get you a long way. Um, and just because the research is currently on you or on your team doesn't mean that you have to live in a silo and uh, um, all the uh, uh, research achievement is only up to you. Consult other, consult the industry, try to get uh, as many as challenges as possible from others along the way, making sure that you do uh, your research right and uh, uh, not uh, uh, making others people mistakes. Um, and a final tip, when facing a breakthrough, when you feel like you're on the verge of something great and finally things are getting into place and you just need a little bit more to make it happen, let loose. Take a little bit more time that you need, uh, another week or two, um, depends on the environment, but another week or two are definitely worth it. Um, So if we're taking a step back and looking at the big picture of uh, managing your whole portfolio, and again, it doesn't have to be for a manager that's managing a few projects, but also for the, for the individual that in a year or so uh, uh, get carried away to a few uh, uh, items and a few different tasks. So if we're going to take a step back, remember it's, it's all a matter of the right dosage. If all of your deliveries or very um, tight and tactical and doesn't leave much room for research, that's not good. Maybe it's going to please the customers in the short run, and they're going to say, hey, uh, you know what, that, that team is working well. We've got this and that. Or maybe your manager is going to say, you know what, this guy is great. He's giving me a, a constant result. But in the long run, as I've said in the first, it's not going to drive new innovation. You're going to run out of low-hanging fruits and there's no, uh, not going to be a real growth to you or the team or the group. Um, however, on the other side of the scale, you don't want to be that research guy or team that is really smart and uh, uh, keep making promises about new innovation that's going to come, but no deliveries. So if you do have a really ambitious project that you're really passionate about and want to carry out this year or this half, uh, that's OK. But maybe make sure you have a few quick wins just, again, to get the business going. Um, this is how uh, specifically I plan um, um, my team's uh, planning. Make sure we have a few safe deliveries, a few um, uh, more in-depth research, and a few long shots. And if not now, if your research did not succeed and you failed, then there's always later. Uh, and as long as you're balancing your portfolio and making sure you still make some deliveries, then you can definitely fail, um, wait until all the conclusions are made, or the environment change, or uh, uh, the breakthrough came from somewhere else, and then try again when you're more certain um, of your uh, uh, project and delivery. Um, so uh, I want to sum it up a bit. Um, I think that uh, AI research is a big performance driver. And again, if you consider yourself an AI person, team, group, whatever, uh, definitely worth investing 
in uh, this kind of innovation. Uh, however, you must pick your battles. Make the right project in the right dosage, uh, in the right time, in order to reach those success. Otherwise, they're going to catch you and you won't have any research. And doing the research before the research will get you a long way. Plan yourself. Uh, frame it, make the benchmark. It sounds like uh, maybe redundant overhead, but it actually saves a lot of time and a lot of grief. And once you set the expectation right and follow the research as you planned it ahead, uh, uh, it can definitely bring some results. Um, so that was my uh, talk for today. I hope uh, you got something out of it and uh, uh, make your next project a uh, a bit more efficient, and um, I'll be free for uh, questions later on in the break. Have a great one. <laughs>